How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and this is Tutorial Tuesday! In this special request RPG Maker MV tutorial we're going to be taking a look at Galb's e Event Spawn Timer plugin and just a little bit of what it can do, not a full uh, you know, coverage of everything it can do because it could be used for a number of different things. But this is a special request for Minnow, uh, Matt aka Minnow. He's trying to make like a farming sim type thing which I think is really cool and he's got a few plugins he's asked me to do tutorials on. I'm going to narrow them down into one tutorial per uh, or one plugin per tutorial. So in this one uh, you can see his message here he's asking basically he wants to be able to, to harvest plants over and over that'll just keep coming back and he's trying to figure out uh, how to use this plugin or anything that'll help him set up a timer. So this is a cool plugin. Um, basically it's plug and play you put it in and you don't have any parameters to mess with but it's kind of confusing it took me a little while to figure it out so basically you set up a timer um, and we could go through this but I think it's better if I just show you that what I found besides reading it to you so basically what you have to do is set up a timer on an event and then that timer won't actually do anything that timer just keeps track of a variable that passes that that goes you know with the number of frames in the game so if you're running at 144 it's also gonna go faster you have to keep that in mind too so uh, this timer based system will work not on actual seconds but uh, 60 seconds uh, 60 frames per second it'll be it'll be pretty much lined up so um, if you're running 60 frames per second it'll work the, the same uh, as far as I can tell at 144 it's it goes faster than that right so anyway you set up uh, a script call and you can do this in a move route script call, but this is the method that I found that's very simple and uh, easy way to make it work. Uh, first of all, let me show you what we're going to be doing. Uh, and then you could see if that's something you want to try to figure out how to do. Um, it's actually simple once you figure it out. So, okay, so we, we walk around and we've got this little uh, grape bush right here. And we can harvest these grapes and we get a message saying it'll grow back in 10 seconds if we want to harvest them. We'll say yes. We harvest them, we obtain those grapes, and now this turned into uh, just a plant with no grapes on them. But if we wait, wait around for 10 seconds at 144, it's actually like four and a half seconds, um, but it's set up to go for 10 seconds. So at 60 frames per second, that would have been 10 seconds. Um, they come back, they just automatically respawn. Now, of course, you would probably set this to a lot longer than 10 seconds. You'd probably put it to, you know, like maybe five minutes or something, you know, but this is, I made it simple because there's no point in waiting for five minutes. So we can harvest the grapes again and that'll work on a timer and we can go run around and do whatever we want and we come back to go hard, you know, we can come back and just harvest them whenever we want and we, we get those grapes and we can yummy down on some grapes. So basically it's just a cool little way to um, simplify setting up a lot of uh, spawn points on your map that you can harvest multiple times based on a timer is pretty simple and pretty cool let's look at the event real quick um, in the plugin uh, well actually we'll take a look at the plugin because that's where we were so in the plugin you put it in on uh, I guess I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get this uh, I'll actually link to Galv's page so you can uh, he can get the the traffic for that not a, instead of a, a direct download um, so anyway I, I recommend reading just this little paragraph right here but what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up a timer so scroll down and you're gonna see where it says script call for event commands and you're going to use this uh, as a script call you're going to use this dot set spawn and then a map ID an event ID and then the number of seconds you want it to last this is just going to put a timer on that event so that it keeps track of how much time has passed that's just setting up the timer now in order to get that to do anything you have to do another uh, another script call on a, at a different spot and there's some examples here. The help file is really, really clear. It's kind of confusing at first, but it's really clear when you put some time into it. You see it. So then you're going to do a separate uh, script call, which will be this one. Or you can, there's several different methods you can go about doing this. This is the easiest way that I found out. So you can do this dot do timer, map ID, event ID, the switch, the status, and force end. We're not going to be using force end uh, for this method because you don't have to, so we're not going to. Um, and let's take a look at how we actually have it up. So inside the event, I've got um, a simple show text. Do you want to harvest the grapes? They're going to grow back in however many seconds you want. A show choice, yes or no. When they say yes, you award the item. You um, give them uh, the text that uh, letting the player know they got the item. Showing an animation if you want to, any flavor, sound effects you want to put right here. Then we have to do a script call. So we right click, we insert new, we go to tab three, we go to the bottom and we click on script under advanced. 
Now inside this script call, we're going to set the timer. We're going to specify how long uh, we want it to take before it comes back. So we're going to do this dot set capital S on spawn. And then we're going to put in three things. We're going to put in a map ID. We're going to put in an event ID and we're going to put in the number of seconds. Now, how do you figure this stuff out? Well, when you look at an event, when you, so we've got this event highlighted in the editor, it'll tell you what event number that is. So right here in the bottom right, you see that we've got 002 colon event 002. Now we could rename this event to something else and call it grapes one or whatever. That doesn't actually change its ID at all. That just changes its uh, its name, you know, its, uh, its, its name right there. So you can see we're, we're, we are highlighting grapes one, but this is ID number two. So if we're gonna reference this by setting a timer on it, we have to use this number, not 002, but just two, uh, as its event ID number. Now, how do we figure out what map number we're on? Um, well, you may think, okay, this is map number one, this is map number two, map number three, and four. No, it's really simple. If you look right here, you'll see that just like when you highlight an event, it gives you its event ID. You also have the, the map ID in the bottom right here. So this, uh, it's only the fourth one down, or yeah, the fourth one down, but it's actually ID number 34. So if we go back to where we were at here, we see that this is map ID number three. So we're gonna control uh, the event number two on the map number three, and then we can set the second. So that's how we figure out what numbers to put inside this timer. This dot set spawn three for the map, two for the event, and the, then the third one is the number of seconds. So let's set this to 15. Now there's another thing you can do. If you're going to put this, and it works in this case too, if you want to reference this ID and this map, you can use zero. So if I were to put zero for this map and zero for this event and then 15 seconds, it should work exactly the same as if I specified map three event uh, two. So let's double check that before. That's what it said anyway. It's supposed to work like this. Let's, I want to make sure. So supposedly zero will reference itself uh, as a map and as an event. So in 15 seconds, probably about seven since we're going at 144, it should come back and uh, work the same. Does it? Yes, it does. There it goes. So there you go. You can use zero to reference this map and you can use zero to reference this uh, event ID. So very, very simple, very easy. Hopefully that makes sense. We can set this back. If we want to uh, specify something, we can say, um, map goes first, so we're gonna say this is three and then event goes here So we'll say event two and then whatever ten seconds will work fine boom now We set the timer, but that doesn't actually make it switch back and forth how we're doing that is we're just creating another page So after we set the timer This is also an action button, right? So this first page it's not gonna happen until we action button and start it So after we hit the action button it runs all of that if we say no nothing happens but if we say yes, it does all this stuff and then it also turns on self switch A. So then we're gonna create a new page. So on the second page, you create the, you pick whatever image you want it to look like while it's still growing, you know, and you can even have multiple timers to have it look like it's dirt and then it's a little plant and then it's a bigger plant and then it's a full grown, full grown plant. You just repeat the same steps. So on the second uh, page, whenever you want it to uh, keep ticking, you know, you keep checking, we're gonna set the trigger to parallel. Now that's important, otherwise it won't update unless you check it. So we're setting this trigger to parallel on the second page. Also, the conditions for this page to be met is self switch A. So this page won't, it won't read this page unless we've said yes and we've harvested the grape by turning on self switch A. So once it's checking this page every frame as a parallel process, we're gonna do a script call the second thing. Now we're gonna actually make it do something when the timer is expired. So we do another script call, right click insert new, go to tab three under advanced, you click uh, script. And inside this, we're gonna go this dot do capital T on timer. Now we do the same thing here. We reference the map ID, the event ID, and then we could reference either um, a variable, uh, I'm sorry, a switch number right here. So if I put one, that's gonna, that's gonna uh, turn off or on switch number one. The, the next thing you put in is true or false. If you want to turn on the switch, then you set it to true. If you want to turn it off, you set it to false. If you want to reference this event's uh, self switches, you put in two double uh, 
quotations and you put in A to D. A, you know, one for each self switch. So we're going to say this map, this event, self switch A, turn it off. Hopefully that makes sense and we don't forget your inline. And that's all that's going to happen is uh, once it once we activate this, it, run, it turns on the timer and it goes to this page. Now, the timer keeps running whether this is parallel or not, but it won't know to turn off this, uh, it won't know to do anything unless we call this script to, you know, to check the timer and do something if the, the timer is already expired. So by setting this parallel process, even if we're running and, you know, and going into another map and coming back, it's going to check this timer and, uh, and make sure that it's, uh, uh, it checks it as soon as the switch goes off and a timer's expired, it'll boom, go right back to being fully grown grapes. So that's why we do that as a parallel. So that's all we got to do. We're saying when the timer expires, we set for 10 seconds, turn off self switch A. So what's going to happen is self switch A is going to be turned off here. And now it's going to no longer meet the requirements for this page because self switch A has to be on for this page to be met. So it's going to loop back to this page and start over right there. So that's a very simple loop on how you can make harvestable plants and you can uh, use zeros for uh, this map uh, and then zero for this event and you can reference the event ID right here to see what you want to uh, whatever event you're controlling and whatever map you're trying to control right there with that number so with those numbers and those two very simple script calls using this plugin Galv's uh, what's it called again event spawn timers plugin really cool plugin and uh, maybe in the next tutorial, we'll look at the other crops one, but you don't actually need it for uh, a simple thing like because you're asking. So Minnow, thank you so much for your special request. Thank you for your support on Patreon. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate everybody who supported me on Patreon. That's why these tutorials still are happening. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to do it for this special request RPG Maker Envy tutorial. If you're interested in uh, learning more about RPG Maker MV. I've got hundreds of tutorials. If you're interested in learning about Game Maker Studio, I've got a couple dozen tutorials on that. And yeah, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. If uh, you uh, want me to playtest your game and possibly make a video on it, please join the Discord. Link's in the description below. And uh, just uh, stop by, say hi to everybody, and, and message me by right-clicking my name and, and shooting me the download link once it's ready and, and playtested and everything. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.